Okay, so I think we're going to go ahead and start. Uh, this is about uh, evaluating uh, team performance within Debian. Uh, it's Andreas Thiele and Sukhbar Singh. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to them. If you guys have questions, raise your hand. I can get the mic to you. Um, here you go. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you here. It's a, a, speci a specific pleasure for me to um, s present this uh, Google Summer of Code project because it's uh, the first project I'm mentoring as mentor and I have a really great student and Alexis and so I think this talk will be just fun. What was the motivation for this? Yeah, I think it was three years ago when I uh, wondered uh, who are the members of our team. It was actually the Debian Mid team and I did not find a really good an answer and so I was thinking about who is regularly posting on the, our mailing list as a first means. And um, well, I, I did some graphing and I was astonished that I can see really who is inside the team and also who left the team, which is interesting. You are wondering why are these people leaving the team and so, and are there any problems? And is are enough members in our team? And all these questions um, somehow showed up and I thought, well, this is an interesting thing. For instance, this was my first graph updated now. And you see, in the first time, I was quite alone for three years. And then came some members. And it's actually not so important that this high peak, which is just me, but important is there are other peoples which are also there. And so I think the run over by bus factor is, is quite good in this team. So we have a solid base. We, we actually lost somebody who is not uh, active in, in our team anymore, but he is still in Debian. Yes, this is the Debian made team. This is the in initial team I, I started. And once I presented a graphics like this in, in Argentina, people said, said and told me, hey, cool, can I see this graph for my team? And um, so I thought, well, why not? Uh, but as it is, if you are doing a presentation, it was just a quick hack. And I did this just, uh, I was browsing the, the web archive for, for names and so, and it showed up, it is, it's not good code and nothing. And finally, uh, we also said, well, on the mailing list, you are just chatting. Who are the people who are committing code? Who are the people who upload packages? And all this stuff should be done, and we should also try to do a fair evaluation. There might be people who are just quoting text and say, yes, I agree. And so this is not really work. And so and so, um, uh, Sukhbe had some interesting ideas how, how we can do it better. We will prepare later. And so we now again for more flexibility in the, in the evaluation and uh, did some technical enhancement over this quick hack. So what did we, have we done? Uh, in addition to this mailing list analysis, we also are an analyzing uh, VCS commits currently in SVN and Git, and uh, what packages are, who in the team has uploaded on behalf of the team. If you have any ideas, we can discuss it later. Maybe uh, some teams are more or less uh, um, communicating in IRC or so, which is not the case in those teams. But there are probably chances and ideas we could discuss later or now. But the good thing in the sum of code, you have somebody who implements the stuff. And I can sit and wait now, and I'm waiting for the uh, introduction of Sophia. So have fun. Hi. So uh, Andreas had already done most of the work, but we decided that we'll start it from scratch because it was just a series of hacks. So we needed something that would be easier to maintain. And so we wrote everything right from scratch. So. Um, it's very fast as compared to the previous code because for most operations we SSH into Elliot and then perform them locally. So like for the Debian med repository, uh, it took us like 12 to 14 hours initially, but when we started this approach, it just takes us two to two to three hours. So it's fast, like you don't have to do anything. Uh, this is what Andy has started and every project has a mailing list. Uh, we measure who are the most active contributors so quantity is not the only metric because quality also of communication does matter because uh, if you're talking too much and it's not substantial, it doesn't matter much. And we uh, handle spam, so 
the we, you do not need to worry about it. So in the final result, we automatically remove the spam. So we just get a list of the top contributors. So um, since I'm a summer of code student, so we have the SOC coordination mailing list, and uh, we this is from the data we graphed, and as you can see, uh, OB Arthur is at the top, and but you can see how it varies. Like in 2010, we have Stefano who is contributing the most, and in 2011, we have Anna who is contributing the most. So this is what we are aiming at. This is a very simple data. We are measuring many more things in it. Uh, the number first thing is frequency of posting, which is just who who the number of postings. And then we have, this is something which we added, this is new. So we take into account the raw length of the message body and the length of the body excluding blank lines, blank lines and quotes. And finally, this is I think the most concrete metric because we remove every uh, clutter possible and we remove the blank lines, we remove the quotes and we remove the signature. So we have something which tells us concretely who actually talks better, right? It's not over just quantity, it's quality also. Yeah, so anything which you would like to contribute to this because this is all we have been able to come on. Uh, I just wanna, there are a couple of different readability metrics that you could use if you're interested in seeing who's posting things that are comprehensible as opposed to lengthy. I feel like this would give people more sort of points if they post very long, uh, you know, flame war type things or <laughs> impenetrable technical jargon and maybe it's, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what the metrics would be, but it might be interesting to try to apply but, some of those to the filtered without blank lines, without quotes, without signatures. Yeah, but th that is the only problem because then uh, how do we actually me measure in a meaning list like who talks the most substantial thing because that's not possible, so. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else would like to contribute anything to this? Because we need more, yeah. Um, for every email that is sent, what? The number of emails I've sent, what percentage of those have actually been followed up by someone else? So if I keep sending emails that are not relevant, they'll be ignored. Yeah, that's a good idea. How about attachments? Because people often send patches to the mailing list because they are not, not not the real member of the team yet, and yeah, post one two patches, and then someone says, "Yeah, you're a good guy. Join us." Do you count the attachments uh, in in or not? We measure uh, commit stats, so maybe somehow that I think should be taken care of. That, but right, no, nothing specific about patches. No. Can you elaborate some more, like, what are you trying to get? Um, well, uh, not really. If you, if you commit, uh, no, if you, if you send in a Git patch so, and someone applies it to the repository, then he is a committer. Yeah. But uh, when you use SVN or something for mm. your team, then the committer is the, the, the person who co committed it, really. Yeah. So the, the, the contribution isn't attributed to the person who, who sends the patch and he won't show up in your metrics at all, or just when he re really joins the team. So he missed the history. I think that this might happen, but I think if you want to have the, the global image, it will not happen so often that somebody is uh, just sending his commits, 50 commits uh, via email, he then becomes a member and really commits to it. So this might happen, but it's probably hard to measure. The idea is Fine, but it's, I think it's more effort than it's worth. Uh, we, can, we should do it about it. Okay. So now we come to this. Uh, we have started including VCS commits also because I think uh, we don't have many metrics, so we just have to, you know, make use of the ones which we already have. So again, quantity is not equal to quality. So we also measure the number of lines added and number of lines deleted. So. <laughs> it is, but we don't because we have very lim limited number of metrics. So we have to make use of the ones which we already have, no matter how poor or bad they are. Like lines of code is hardly a good metric. Like 
uh, suppose if in a Git repository you commit a binary file, you will see that it has like, if you commit an image file, it will have 500 lines committed. So it's, it's a poor metric, we know, but there's nothing we can do about it because these are the only metrics which we can measure. Okay, now we have the challenges, like the problems which we faced. So this is the first problem because we have no solution to this other than, yeah. You do have an mbox archive of list Debian org on master. Every yeah, but, you can uh, access it. Okay, you can continue. Yeah, sure. I can elaborate on, the, on this. Um, as I said, I started with the web archive because the web mboxes were, were not publicly available. Okay, and uh, this is was really crap. And this uh, is you have a, um, some Python uh, module which can pass NNTP. And actually, there are mboxes on master. And um, I can pass them, but not he and not the public. And we want to publish this data. And as long as we, uh, we elaborated with the list masters and asked them, kept on asking them, can you please publish these mboxes? Because it's branded stupid on Elliot. We have mboxes, he has a code for mboxes, but we can't use the mboxes on list.debian.org. Uh, if there is anybody who knows, List master and could help us that they publish it some way, he would be really, really happy. Because so. uh, right now, uh, we, it, it was extra code, but we fetch them through NNTP, then we create an inbox, and then we pass it. So it was, uh, they refused because they said it was not, uh, there were privacy, privacy issues with this. So, so I, I wonder if you should talk to Enrico uh, about measuring contributions. Um, because he has this nifty script, which he says is very fast, uh, and apparently also works well, so uh, of mining change logs, and I think the notion, uh, so you say lines of code is not a good metric, but yeah. probably uh, team member contributions to bug logs is quite interesting, and uh, team members being uh, mentioned in change logs is also quite interesting. Right. Um, so, for the way we measure, kind of, we, we kind of measure performance uh, in the NM process, unfortunately, it cannot be done automatically. Uh, besides, there are, there's an EU directive saying that you cannot automatically evaluate the performance of uh, somebody that um, you want to hire, <laughs> <laughs> and we abide to that. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, the jokes apart, it's not just um, grabbing the change logs that gives you results. It, it's not numbers because then you go and read, and maybe you only find things that did not really require work uh, in the change logs. Uh, that rarely happens, but you'd like to see that there are substantial uh, change log entries. And even the way we grab for change logs cannot be automated. I cannot make an automatic thing to click for an applicant and, and that fishes up a change log because uh, names can be ambiguous. It needs intelligence to build up a query for something that kind of only gives you the change log of that person. And unfortunately, we have two people called Luca Bruno <laughs> in Debian. Uh, and well, they they, they are. <laughs> uh, we can't use mind change logs on them, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, because in that case it's ambiguous, but and even uh, again, as it's been mentioned before, for mailing list, um, when if we look at mailing list activity, we just uh, call up via DD portfolio um, like all messages of some person, and we go through them. And if we want to look for commit activity or BTS activity, we kind of do the same. Um, if you count committed lines of code, and all somebody does is reformatting <coughs> source files. Um, then they'll have loads of lines added and removed. And I wanted to suggest to count lines removed because often they're the most useful passes. Yeah, we do that. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, again, you know, when you sort of reformat pieces of code, then, uh, right, okay, um, that's the same. So uh, I, I can be asked about manually sort of putting intelligence into um, evaluating people's performance and doing it efficiently. But if you want to compute like a karma number or something, um, I am not the expert in the room for that. I'm sorry. We actually do not want to measure the karma. We want to know if there are 
10 or 20 people working on the same project. We are not proud on being high on top on this list. It's, it's important to have several people and not only one. In that case, I think it's enough to say there is activity over time. And you can already just not, you don't even need to measure the number of lines committed, you just measure the number of commits. And, uh, say, and, and see that, you know, there are commits in a day, and how many days in a month there are commits. And you set a threshold and you say that person's active in the team in that month. Or, or messages and so on. There is activity in the month from that person in that team. That would yeah. probably be enough to say to, to say that person's active. So uh, as as I said, it's it's not um, a competition what we want to do. It's just to see is there a problem in the team? Are we losing people or are we winning people? Yeah, this this is the point, and it's, it's really helped a lot uh, for me to to a little bit understand there are problems in the teams. When I made my my analysis, I've seen teams consisting of one person, and so this team ha has a really problem. Uh, and what are the reasons? And what can I learn from from this? This is, this is something like this. I really like the idea to to uh, check for bugs which people might have fixed in the yeah, team. Yeah. We could. I think I have a good idea how to do it with UDD, and yeah. And about names, uh, you will be astonished. We have um, de uh, a single Debian developer who is uh, using uh, six or seven different strings for uh, spelling its names. Uh, name, and then this is the maximum, and, and there are several with only one. And I found some some way to to derive a table from the UDD which has identical names for, for those that have one name and one person and then probably I have two two persons <laughs> or uh, mixed and two or whatever. Uh, so the, the details to to make sure that you get really the person are quite hard. Some people are changing their email there and, and earlier there are name minus guest and then they become name or even different name and so this this makes uh, the stuff under the hood a little bit hard. But I think finally you see an image about the team. It's not a question to discuss is this person just um, reformatting or not. I, I can't believe this, that one single person has fun in doing 1,000 reformats of code and is top committer in this team. I can't imagine this one. So any further questions, comments? Just to comment on the reformatting, if there is a team that decides that their code base needs to be changed to a new uh, set of coding conventions, the person who does the grunt work of actually doing the transition is a valuable member of the team, even if it's not you know, significant intellectual labor. And to second your point, I think with uh, thousands of, of many uh, commits and huge load of data, it uh, that's, it's, uh, will be just noise these things and if it's real work then it will be there and okay. I'm a little bit uh, uh, wondering why nobody writes the, the, the problem of privacy which is um, which, which <laughs> we should talk about it if you can show one of these graphs please or either the last one because well, when I did the first um, graphs I had full names there and people said they are not allowed to do this and okay I read, and now we, we cut off the last name, which somehow worked, but you know the busiest people, you, everybody in the room knows who it is. Uh, is there anybody who sees some problem in this? No, I'd like to uh, interject because this information is public anyway, so if you are contributing to a public mailing list, you are specifically told it's going to be public. You are, you, it's not you're, not, you're not, you're not being forced to participate. If it's private, you're told it's private, so. Yeah, I mean, I would say, that, yes, there are problems with it being public, but the problems are not with the work you're doing. The problems are with the mailing list. And if, if, there are people, if we're discouraging contributors because they feel that they can't participate because of the publicity, then that is potentially a problem. However, the openness is the trade-off there, and I, I don't know that we can make any other decision. And, well, if there's a privacy issue, uh, all of should close. 
because Oloch is doing exactly the same thing. I don't know if you know about it. It's this website that basically does that. And, um, and uh, well, as far as I'm concerned, uh, although I, I asked the problem with Oloch, it's probably not that they do that, but uh, I emailed them saying that they were misrepresenting me in my work and I would like them to take, take down my name from the site. I just do not want to appear because I do not want to spend time fixing my information in there and adding to their value. They're not free software people, so. And, uh, you know, I, I do not want to put work in it and I do not like the way you represent me, uh, so please take my name down. And they basically told me to fuck off. <laughs> And I think it's at that last point that you have a privacy issue in, in such things. It's, yes, it's stuff that's pu publicly accessible and you mine it. Yeah. Fine. But, um, yeah, the, the, and then as long as the moment somebody tells you, you know, please take me off yeah, so that we, thing. We'll do that if someone asks. Yeah, yeah then that's no problem. I think yeah. there's no problem with that. Oh, okay, okay. So you just recommend that we have some sort of form if you want to take your name out of this, you can contact us. Then, okay. I, I perfectly ag agree with this. This was also my argument. But um, I, uh, when we're discussing this, um, I, I learned something um, that if you um, aggregate public data, it becomes somehow new data because this aggregation process is um, something not everybody can do. So this is actually new data. And I have no problem. I, I would not be here if I think it's wrong. But I'm just asking. And, um, for, for instance, what could happen if the employer of Obey Arturo said, what have you done in 2009? Oh, you was chatting all the time at Google Summer School. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this could be a problem. So, um, I think for, for our uh, stuff, it's not a problem, but I would like, I just raised this, this point. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not thinking that it's true, but I just want to hear your, your opinion. Well, given that the goal of this particular project is the evaluation of teams, it seems like you could present the information with no names attached at all to simply say, is the team healthy? Look at the number of contributors. Look at how the contributors change over time. So you have a consistent color per person. And maybe we don't need to know who the name is unless it's a team that only has one color showing up, right? If everything you see there is a red bar and then nothing, 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 then maybe you want to know who that person is so you can help them out. But if, that, if that's already the case and you know the name of the team, you go to the team's mailing list and you could probably find that person. So, should I proceed? Uh, this is the second problem which we have been having so because it doesn't seem to work. We need someone who's good with Git so if you know how to do it. Because uh, upstream, we, we want to remove the upstream contributors. So then in some mailing lists, uh, in some repositories, there are lots of them. So much so that they overshadow the other members of the team, so. So the actual cases we have, uh, um, f formerly I just uh, investigated in the, the commits we are mailing list, and then you see the, the commit um, which was sended by the daemon after commit to mailing list. And now uh, Sukbi is uh, investigating re the real commits in, on the git logs and the SVN logs. And then you see we have some upstream developers who are really, really active in upstream and are committing to our git repository and doing two or three change kinds in the Debian directory. And this, we have a very specific case, this rises it is the higher, highest committer in our whole team, even if he has committed nearly nothing to the Debian packaging. And yeah, uh, as the solution uh, comes up. And it, I just wanted to explain why, why it's on the slide. And so we, we, it's a little bit uh, for technical from the Git point of view. So I guess I just wanted to know if my script I sent you doesn't work, please tell me and I'll yeah, fix it. Yeah, yeah. This is thanks to David. It, it is uh, basically solved. We just got the code in, in Perl, and which should be helpful to to solve it. These, these slides are a little bit older. He wanted to show the problems he had. So, uh, same answer, a similar answer. Yeah, okay. but you can try because anything new is welcome. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I wanted to suge suggest uh, you usually have an upstream branch and the Debian branch, and yeah. you can measure the delta of the b two branches because the upstream will have only the upstream commits usually. Yeah, but anyways, I think I tried, but it didn't work out. So maybe there's something so I'm missing. So anybody who, for better or worse, followed my advice uh, probably wouldn't have a Debian only commits on a separate branch. But unfortunately, people don't follow your advice. <laughs> <laughs> your problem would be because of them following my advice. So I, 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 I think that in general it's not useful, or at least I find it not useful. I see how it would be useful for you. But yeah. But I think this problem is basically solved. This code is there and should be okay. We need them because uh, I've been requesting for this from the start because uh, we are not fully convinced because, and we have time left, so it's not about time also. A any new way of measuring performance is very much welcome because we need them. This is the maximum which we could come up with because we tried everything and I stay next to you. <laughs> so uh, I think one very interesting metric would be uh, commits uh, from team members upstream and then you have to sort, you have your problem again but I think that this is a huge contribution if people make fixes which end, uh, on your team make fixes which end up and they do the work of getting it upstream I think that's something that's really important for, for Debian well, I think it would only work for people who are using Git. Uh, in other, otherwise, you, you can't see it. And uh, we have teams which are using mixed repositories, and you have have a wrong tendencies to to use this. To have, if you observe the Git people, and others don't use Git. <clears throat> um, maybe I've missed it. But something like new DDs coming from a team within a, a certain time frame would also be interesting information. Uh, uh, advoc advocations, uh, NMs, uh, DMs, and uh, yeah. So you mean uh, that if uh, we learn that some some DMs or DDs come to this team because they are members of the team, this would be a good sign in this uh, aspect or. or just to make sure I understand. Um, how do I put this? Um, members of the teams who get advocated by other team members to, to enter the NM process. I think we have a lot of them in, in Debian Meet, perhaps it's in, in different teams. I think we have eight or even ten people gathered for Debian, so perhaps we can find this somehow. I guess you can measure wiki page edits but uh, there will be a problem with uh, mapping of uh, a wiki author with an uh, email or something. Yeah, it's possible, yeah. yeah I actually read uh, the uh, change logs of those which are tech Debian made, but uh, it's hard to find a way to, to tell what wiki page is for what team. It's, if there's a clear mapping team, wiki page, but yeah, we can think about it. In Python teams or uh, wiki pages related to our teams, start with Python slash something. So that's okay. So you're suggesting to start with a team name and then, yeah, okay. Yeah, we might consider it. Yeah, yeah. Just checking. Anybody else? So. This is what we have done till now. It's been, I guess, two months. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we have mailing list for Elioth, and which works very well because Piper Mail has all the archives already. So we just fetch them and pass them. For lists.debian, we had lots of discussions, and then finally we fetch them over NNTP, then we create them boxes, and then we throw them over to Al the Elioth parser. So that's how it works. So. Git and SVN deposits are complete, and what is incomplete is we don't, we almost, I think this, this won't take much time. Like, we'll be fetching package upload data from the ultimate Debian database, and 
the thoughts which you presented. And finally, we'll have something like, uh, it will be easier for you to fetch the information, like Popcorn, for example, does that. So it, you can easily check, like, in the month of August in 2011, who was the most active contributor, something like this. Right? Um, I think that's it. This is our website, and we have a public mailing list, so if you have any thoughts, you can get in touch with us. I have a su suggestion or problem I face in the Debian Games team. We have over 170 members, and yeah, well, I fetched the list on Aliot. <laughs> I did not, uh, members as in logins in the group, so no, not group together with the old alias and the new DD uh, login. Um, and from my poor Python scripts, about 80 people did not commit or, and did not mail since the uh, January of 2010. It would be really good to have a possibility to ping all those people, most probably over your interface because it has all the data already. Yeah. So tell, hey, are you still interested in, in being in the team or should we just remove you now and you can rejoin later when you have the, the time? Because um, when we do meetings, we are 20 people in the channel, we don't know, are we everyone who is interested to work at the moment or should we wait more? Do we need more um, opinions or can we just decide on our own because we are the majority currently online? So you actually want to use the data and ping the members to ask them whether they want to still contribute or not? Yes. Yes, that's a good idea, yeah. Because that would be actually making use of this, the data which we have gathered, yeah. Yeah. yeah it was similar for me. We had in, in earlier, there yeah, are 90 or 100 people, and I think 30% of them never did a single commit. They just subscribe because they like the, the idea of the project and thought this is something good. So I think another uh, way to sort of publicize this um, that would be nice for the project is to just send an email that maybe goes into a Debian Devel announce or something, just highlighting the teams that you found that do seem to have an active and healthy community in them, just so people can acknowledge that one of our values in the project is to actually have active and healthy communities. Um, so not to like highlight the teams that aren't actually teams. The te don't don't highlight the teams that are one person, but highlight the teams that are actually teams that are functional and say, you know, we want to acknowledge, you know, based on our rough heuristics, these folks seem to be uh, doing a good job at fostering yeah, that's that a culture. Yeah, that's a really good idea, yeah. Um... It's probably no reliable way of doing this, but it might be useful for certain teams to be able to distinguish members between active and passive. Uh, so for instance, I have a few packages in the Python team. So I'm not really taking, I'm not, I don't consider myself an active member of the team, but I just version control my stuff there so that I make it easier for other people to, to do changes. So if you can say there are X members active members in the Python team, I think it would be useful to know how many of those are actually, you know, contributing to the whole package set or just have their own. So how, how do you, uh, I mean, what do you suggest on how we do that? Because. <laughs> so I guess we agree that that would be a useful thing to know. Yeah, but um, then if you want others vouching for you or you will vouch for yourself, that is what I want to know. How do you want this to happen? Because I guess you could see if, uh, if p certain people tend to consistently commit only in packages in which they are either a maintainer or an uploader. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, you could look at commit messages or change logs. I don't know. Well, I think uh, you, you can't tell if people consider themselves a member of the <laughs> team. If they upload on behalf of the team, they are, for us, per definition, member of the team. This is what we call a member of the team. And you can't, it should not count the number. It's just what, what you have done counts, even if you say, well, I'm not so close to this team, but you have done some work out. If you 
posted to the mailing list. If, if you don't show up frequently, you are not on this graph. And so. Yeah, because we just take the top, I think we'll just take the top X contributors or something, not everyone, so yeah. Okay, so I guess that's it. If you have any questions or suggestions, please. So we, we also tried it. If, if you uh, take everybody, you get also the last spammer who did yeah. not was get uh, fetched by our uh, spam protection stuff. So it's, it makes sense to have the, the most active 10 or 20, or in large teams, 30, but not more. And if you are committing only very few, then you are not visible in the statistics. This was actually also the send to, it's, it's the idea of, of mine to, to get rid of, of everything which is not so important for the team. So it's specifically also spam and so on. Hi. Could this be used to identify possibly orphaned or packages in within the team, as in packages that are under the team but no one is actually actively working on them? From Maybe. Yeah. yeah. True. Yeah. Because uh, we have not touched that part yet. We, I'll do that once I get back, so maybe, yeah. So anybody else? Any ideas? Uh, do you have any um, overall statistics to show about the number of, about of, you know, the teams in Debian, or do we, are there some results we can see? Yeah, I think from the... We have actually, like, for testing, we have lot, get lots of data, so I think we have that right now. I can, I can show you where, where you can find all this stuff. They are uh, at, at this address at blends.debian.net list stats. You find text files, which is important for for um, accessibility because I got a hint. Uh, um, Debian accessibility team want to see their committers and they can, can't pass this. And the PNG files, and this is updated updated once a month. And if you want to see some results. By chance, I have this graph uh, shown to the, after the DPL talk because you see Stefano Zaccioli it was the most uh, active poster and he dropped his activity when he was becoming DPL. So you actually <laughs> see something in these graphs. Yeah. And pff, there are other examples. This is accessibility li uh, list you see. Samuel Thibault is very active, Mario Lang, and then the activity drops a bit. But I think this is actually a, a good team because there are quite a few people. They are, don't lose many people, and they are doing uh, something. MD64, I think this team is just by, uh, it because it's not used anymore. It's, there's no use. MD64 is completely normal, and there is not much to discuss. Um, for ARM, it uh, happened a little bit later, something, and well, it, I think it's also quite okay. Blends commit. This is because I have all the work with the blends. <laughs> you see, I would love to have some more here. So this is a not so good working team. Um, the blends mailing list. There was a lot of discussion. Discussion in the beginning. This was when we renamed uh, CDD to Blends. There was a lot of discussing. Debian boot list. Yeah, this is uh, a little bit sad when, if I look on this list and see that we lost uh, the famous one. And technical committee. Curiosa, who is chatting the most in Debian? <laughs> you can tease us. But it's not so used anymore by the active people. The even blends commit. Yeah, I, I'm just the, the I, I'm the most frequent chatter, but I'm not the most uh, frequent uproar of code. So you can read this from from these uh, graphs. 
and I actually have we, have we have five minutes left. I have also some graphs of the uploads activity. Oops. You see, um, these uh, graphs are all on this uh, URL. Oops, uploaders, Debian live team. Yes, Debian upload. This is uh, about the uploads of packages in the Debian GIS team here, for example. You see, there are not so many people. I really love to make this a stronger team because they could join if, if all the OpenStreetMap guys would join this team and, and they make a form a real strong team. They could be a real strike force to make Debian a distribution for geographic information system. But they don't believe me. They don't do it. <laughs> Debian Live team. This is basically Daniel Baumann. <laughs> he does a good, good job, but somebody could support him. Debian Me team. Yeah, okay, I'm not, I'm, this, here you can see, because I was losing in the number of commits, I, I obviously um, have larger commits, and the, uh, the Charles has more tiny commits, because I'm winning again if you count the number of uploads. So, whatever this means. Uh, as I said, we, we do not make a competition. Important is that we got here this, these people. This is the most important thing, not this high number. It's okay, but, and, Actually, we have also some, I think 15 to 20 people are active here. This is okay. For, I must say, for a quite niche, oh, that is 20 up, uh, uh, the Debian made is a quite a niche uh, uh, topic, and, and there is not so much use of it, and we have, but we, even though it, uh, got a, has a larger team, here we try to measure the top 20 uploaders to see how it, uh, what it makes from the use, and we, here you get the committers with only one commit, and this is uh, basically a QA also. So it's not so interesting anymore. It might be interesting up to 15 or so. It depending from the size of the team. For Debian Science, there are more people. It's more interesting. Yeah, here it's Debian Science. Yeah, it's, it's, it looks also quite good here. Yeah, here we have the top 35 uploaders, which also does not make so much sense. And DBCM team, so, well, these this are examples. Okay, any more questions? That's all, thank you. Thank you.